What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. A couple weeks back I posted this video about like how to actually improve as a therapist and I spent a lot of time like deconstructing all the things that we think help us improve our therapy outcomes for our clients but that don't actually have any bearing or very little bearing on the outcomes of our therapy clients and then I didn't spend much time talking about how to actually make those improvements. Some of you called me out on that one, which I appreciate, and some of that was just that video was getting way too long and I chopped it down for my own sanity while editing it, but I thought it would be nice to release some videos that speak to practical tools that we can right away start implementing in order to improve our therapy outcomes. Now, I started reading the Better Results book which is fabulous. I'm like a third of the way through and it's written by Scott Miller, Mark Hubble, and Daryl Chow. In that earlier video, I was referencing some of Daryl Chow's work. They have all kinds of practical tools in this book for how to improve your therapy outcomes. So at some point in the future, when I finish the book, I will be sure to share more about it with you. But for now, I thought it would be helpful to just name one very practical tool that we can use right away to help improve our therapy outcomes. So one of the critical elements that's repeated all throughout the Better Results book for how to improve therapy outcomes for our clients is the importance of having an individualized, tailored plan for how each individual therapist improves. Offering some blanket statement towards all therapists is not going to capture whatever you need compared to the therapist sitting next to you compared to me. We all need to have our own tailored individualized learning plans. One educational model that's utilized to do this is called a personalized learning system or PLS. According to the Department of Education, personalized learning refers to instruction in which the pace of learning and the instructional approach are optimized for the needs of each learner. I found this diagram on this website, Education Elements, quite helpful in depicting what it looks like. It includes flexible content and tools. There's also targeted instruction. And then there's student reflection and ownership. So there's ongoing student reflection, which promotes ownership of learning. And then there's data-driven decisions. I've seen already as I read through the Better Results book that each of these elements are touched on in different ways. But in this video, I'd like to focus on the student reflection and ownership category because there are things we can do right away to own and reflect our own growth in order to improve our outcomes going forward. One tip that feels really accessible that Daryl Chow offers is to practice capturing weekly therapy learnings. So basically we can start by focusing on being our own teacher and finding a kind of filing system to file away our own learnings. And this totally makes sense to me. Often I'll be in consult group or I'll just be thinking in my own head about some of my sessions and I'll think, ah, you know what? Next time I'm gonna do this a little bit different. I learned something today. Let me let me try to remember this next time. And then it floats away until, you know, maybe six months later it comes up again in a different session and I totally forgot that maybe that was something I'd learned already and I it didn't stick in my memory. So he suggests that we have a kind of system for tracking what these key takeaways are so that we can help kind of commit them to our own memory and practice them. So basically the way he suggests going about this is to have a dedicated document where you have a weekly Twitter-like snippet of your big takeaway for that week, and you just keep logging in new Twitter snippets every single week. Okay, so here's what he suggests including in our little weekly snippet. You start with the date and then a nice succinct catchy title to kind of help you remember what it is, like a day in the life, and then a one sentence summary of this therapy learning. And he goes on to suggest that it can be helpful to kind of give a little snippet of what happened with the specific case that gave you this new learning so that it can jog your memory the next time you go back and review what you wrote. And then he says to keep each of these to a maximum of 140 words because having that constraint can be helpful not only so that it's easier for you to go back and review once you develop quite a list of them but it also forces you to focus on what the key takeaway was without overly elaborating on it. And I really appreciate I found this other article where Daryl Chow shares samples of his own notes and how he kind of goes about this so I'll just share one from here real quick. Here you can see his title number 29 attend to the person and interaction more than my ideas. Oh, it already sounds juicy. A session number one with someone so notes noticed myself eagerly trying to conjure up something imaginative with her key metaphors 
and so on. And I nearly missed attending to her facial expression after I asked her about what it's like inside to be dealing with the internal isolation, onset of tears welling up, as I was trying to think two to three steps ahead. I've done this before where it's like your client is going through, through something right now where it really would be helpful to pause and say, oh, I wonder what's coming up for you. Notice that you're tearing up a little bit, but your brain is already two or three steps ahead on whatever cool intervention you think you're doing that you totally miss the moment. So relatable. And then the learnings attend to the person in the space between us more than to my ideas. Now, I know that this might sound like one of those things that's like, yeah, don't we learn about this in our training? This isn't like some revolutionary new concept that he has as his takeaway for that week, but he kind of touches on this. That like It's a lot of times those sort of seemingly more basic elements of therapy that we can miss from time to time because we're human and it's helpful to try to catch those, document it because if we missed it one time, we might miss it again or we might need to be reminded of that again. And so this is a helpful way to do that. Now the idea in doing this is that if you pause and do this every single week, just spend a few minutes to go back and review, note a takeaway, add it to your document, that one, just the simple act of creating that pause point thinking what the takeaway was and writing it down can help kind of lock it into your memory a little bit more. But then you also have like over time, weeks, months, and even years of data points of all these learnings that if eventually you go back and review them, you might gain new learnings as you see an overview of patterns and themes, but also just reminding yourself what you learned, you know, six months ago or whenever it was can help lock that learning back into memory because the retrieval piece is what we're trying to train by doing this exercise. The retrieval meaning, okay, the next time he's in a session where his client is tearing up, for example, that he can remember this moment and say, oh, I remember this came up before. Let me just stop for a second, check in with my client rather than jumping ahead. And of course, there's a lot of things you can do with this. I mean, you could just kind of use it for your own self-reflection. Maybe once a quarter, you go through and review all of your learnings for that quarter. Or maybe you do it together as a consult group where each of you individually is keeping track of your weekly learnings. And then every now and then you share them with each other, both so you can teach each other new things, but also so you can invite feedback from kind of the outside observers in your, you know, trusting collegial life as well. So I thought I would share this with you because it feels really easily accessible, very doable. Is this gonna be the thing that like completely revolutionizes all of your therapy? Probably not, but can we add in a few different tools that are this easy to access and see a benefit in our therapy work? Perhaps. So in my mind, it seems worthwhile to give this a try and then keep adding on more accessible, doable t tools like this one until you have a more robust system in place altogether that can help improve therapy outcomes. Hopefully. <laughs> and if you are curious to learn more, um, I'll link to this book below. I have an affiliate link. It just means it costs the same for you, but I get a little percentage of it, um, which, you know, helps me out. Well, I hope this was a helpful little tidbit for you to try out as we all explore ways to improve our therapeutic outcomes. If you like this type of video and you want to see more of these little tidbits in the future, let me know in the comments below so I, I know what you're interested in. And before we close, I'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Therapy Notes covers all of your practice management needs from scheduling to notes to billing, a HIPAA secure telehealth platform, and so much more. If you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Well, I certainly had fun making this video and I'm excited to continue down this journey of learning these new out of the box, but research-based ways of improving our therapy outcomes. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.